Hey everyone. I was working on my Kubota here. Had an issue with the tracks. Uh, made a lot of noise in the undercarriage when you were rolling around. Um, so I decided to go and I had a couple rollers that were loose and I'll show you those. And uh, as I started to disassemble that to repair the rollers, I found a, another issue with the top idler, or I guess the top roller, the idler wheels up front. Um, so I just kind of wanted to go over, looked for some videos online, didn't see much, so I figured I'd take a shot here in case anybody ran into some similar issues. This is the uh, drive gear with the drive motor on the back. And then up front, you've got the idler wheel, which can just spin freely. And to tension the track, that wheel has a cylinder in here that holds grease. So as you fill up this grease zerk, it pushes that idler out, which will tighten your track onto the back gear. So that, if you can see it there, that's the uh, grease zerk. And when you pump that up, it pushes that cylinder that way to push the idler out. And if you take that larger uh, nut out, all the grease will come out of that cylinder. This will retract and I just about took my track off with, you know, my bare hands. I used a pry bar a little bit to help. Anyway, um, so I had an issue with these bottom idlers. There's three of them across the bottom. It's one, two, and three. I've already removed one. And it was really loose. Um, there's the idler right there. And this bolt hole is, is that hole. Uh, it's, it's held on with some standard, I think they were 16 millimeter uh, head bolts. But you can see here the amount of play I had. Yeah, that's on both sides. So these were about 160 bucks a piece to get new ones. I got Prowler brand on eBay. I can put a link in the comments there. Um, but you can see how bad they were. My other ones here were tight. I've got two on the other side that need to be replaced. So while I was in here, um, I was planning to just replace these, and while I was doing that, I noticed an issue with my, with my top idler. And I'll show you the other side to show what it should look like. So you can see here, the top idler is what uh, the track rides across up top. You can see the um, the underneath of the track spins on this idler wheel. It's just a free spin and uh, keeps everything off the, the frame here. It's held back there with a um, just like a clamp style bolt. I'll show you on the other side. So that's what it's supposed to look like. Well here's what I found on the other side. There's the, uh, the hole where the idler uh, shaft goes. And then there's a keeper bolt in here that you tighten up that squeezes this circle onto the idler shaft. Well, here's what I found on this side. That's it. <laughs> Compared to the other side, it's missing the complete idler wheel. It's pretty much just the shaft. And as you can see here, it's worn down on this side and this side where the uh, track guides on the inside there are supposed to run on the wheels, running on this. And at the same time, the track also wore down this uh, keeper bolt uh, holder here. So uh, there was a bolt right here, and you can see the, the top shaved off that bolt. It ran through like that. And it was just about ready to go all the way through there. Uh, the nut looks just as bad. Heck, even worse. Look at, there's the nut. Shave the top half the nut off. So thankfully, I think I caught it in time. I'm a, I ordered a new top idler, also the Prowler brand on eBay. And uh, it'll just slip in that hole, pound in the hole. And then I'll get a new bolt here and tighten that up. And I think there's enough meat on there, you know, with a washer, a thick washer to 
hold that. Um, if not, I might tack weld that bolt in there a little bit just to make it hold better, but the track shouldn't ride on it anymore because it'll be riding up on the larger diameter idler wheel and not the shaft and the top of this here. Um, so that's kind of the, the details there. Um, these bottom rollers were real easy to replace. Like I said, there was two bolts like this. Uh, one on each side went in there and the other side and they just threaded right into these holes uh, Mine weren't rusted shut or anything bad so and you can see underneath there You've just got a channel where they bolt into um, So overall I've never done this before uh, But pretty easy you can just lift the side of the machine up using the arm uh, over here, you know, lift a half up. I set it on some blocks after I got the track off. Um, I think going back on should be just as easy. I hit that idler wheel all the way in with a sledgehammer. So I think as long as I hook the track over the back there, get it around this idler wheel with a crowbar, um, then just slowly turn the track, um, it should ride itself right where it needs to go. So... I'm back working on the Kubota. Um, still haven't fixed the other side over there yet. But I got two rollers in, two bottom rollers in, so I'm gonna fix this side. So I uh, you know, lifted this side up with the bucket arm here and uh, loosened the grease bolt that I talked about earlier inside there. You can see the grease poured out and uh, brought the tensioner back and I undid uh, four bolts, one there, one on the other side, one there, and on the other side. And it dropped these two rollers out. This one was real worn again. This one here wasn't as bad, but still, uh, still pretty loose. Um, you can see some of the movement there. But this one here rolled nice and tight, with no movement, so I'm leaving that one in place. Uh, top roller on this side looks to be in good shape still. I'll uh, lift this track up and make sure that thing moves freely, but hopefully that's in good shape. All right, so I got one new roller in, uh, real easy to install. I'll show you here as I do the second one. So it's got a uh, lip there on it. And the one I pulled out had a similar marking uh, that was on the outside, so that's how I'm gonna install it. The other side is just blank. Well, I guess it's got it too. But this one has some sort of, I don't know if that's a grease zerk or what that might be. It's got an Allen wrench head on it, but these are supposed to be sealed, so I'm not gonna open it up. Anyway, that flat edge where the writing is sits against this flat edge right here. So uh, when you lift it up into there, the bolt will slide right in. I'm trying to see. I'll just go ahead and torque those down. And that'll be it for this side. Well, so I got this uh, strap rigged up here to lift the track up off this top roller. Uh, looking at it, it, it spins barely. Oh, there it started less smoother. But it, it's loose. You can see what kind of movement it's got. It actually just broke free as I spun that. It's been really tight. Now it's actually moving a little bit, but it's just gonna be a matter of time before that falls off. Um, 
so I went ahead and ordered a new one. It was $135. You can see there kind of how much movement it's got on that shaft. But I figured I better replace it um, while I'm already here doing it. But this is an easy way to work on this. Like I said, if you put a strap up there to hold this out of your way, you can you can get in here really without taking the track off. I think I can get that bolt off um, and get this piece out. I'm gonna try to get that bolt out here. I was able to get the bolt back there removed. And basically that's a bolt goes through here and clamps that shaft in there. Uh, once I got the bolt removed, I took this chisel and I stuck it in the crack right in there between those two uh, halves of the circle. And I hammered that in there to spread that out. And uh, as it got up the thicker part of the chisel here, so it spread that out a bit. I sprayed it good with some PB Blaster. Um, then I took my hammer here and I hit this side of it a few times real hard, hit that side of it a few times real hard, and then I was able to reach here and it pulled right out. So there's the shaft and it goes into that hole there. You can see a little bit better um, the hole and where that bolt would go through to clamp down on that shaft and as we expected here you can see uh, kind of the play that it had in there it's real nasty it's supposed to be sealed up in there and smooth so, uh, one little shot here of what I made um, I've got a mobile welder coming tomorrow to uh, weld the mild steel to the cast here uh, I have a welder, but it's a MIG welder, and this kind of requires some specialty uh, preheating and some special rod to make it right. But uh, as you remember, these were shaved off by the track. Um, I fabricated these little pieces of metal, they're quarter inch thick, put a slot in the middle of them there. You can see that um, to allow the round bolt to fit through. So when you set it on there, you can see, I'm trying to go to the other side here, you can see that there's still a, a round hole there for the bolt to go through. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, the bolt would just about fit through with a flat piece there, but I figured that would just be safe. Um, give me a little bit of room and I won't have to try to drill it out. Um, the other option was to flatten the bolt, you know, make the you know, go along one whole length of the bolt and maybe shave a sixteenth of an inch off so it would be flat. Um, that would still work. The nut wouldn't have full thread contact. Um, so this was just an easy way uh, with a grinder to make these and like I said just put a little little slot in them there. Out here and he welded these on here for me. Um, since this was cast and that was mild steel, I didn't want to weld it myself. Um, so he came and he preheated this whole piece here and welded that on with a special nickel rod. And then um, he said he peened it and then he also slow cooled it, which I guess he just kept heating it occasionally so it didn't just cool rapidly. Anyway, repair looks good. I even kind of chewed up this face here and here for my washer and bolt to fit on uh, nicely. Uh, so here's the new roller. Spins good. All sealed. Also got this from uh, Prowler. Shipped in a day so that's nice. Um, it fits in here all the way until it's flush back there. And there we go. Bolt fits through. Oh great these are the wrong size lock washers. You know, they sell the stuff in the bags there, and that stuff never seems right. Well, I'll go get a washer. Washers. Now, got another lock washer. It fits over the bolt. Nut. It's hard to do one handed. Carriage. I'm going to go ahead and replace that last roller and then uh, show you how I put the track on.
what I'm doing here is lowering it down while same time making sure that the track falls within these guides here. So I'll show you real quick what the trick was for me. Basically, you had to get the track, these knobs, to fit up inside these rollers here. And that, once you lowered it down, gave the track enough free length to pop over that front idler wheel. Um, so basically I used a little crowbar and a lot of sledgehammer I was able to push uh, the track over top of that ridge there, down on the bottom first, and then as I rolled it backwards, it worked itself around. So now all I got to do is put grease in there to tension this to spec. Figured I'd take a video of this getting pumped up. So got a grease gun here on that Zerk I've shown you guys, and you can watch the track tension. So it was laying on the ground. Now you see it's it's off the ground. So my clearance there, looking close to that two centimeters. And that actually needs to be checked with the seam of the track on the top roller there. So you may think it's hard to find the seam of this thing. But I've looked before, and it's actually a lot easier than you think. Oh, there it is. That's the sign you're looking for. It looks like an infinity sign. So basically you roll that around to the top center here. Take your measurement, uh, add grease or let grease out as you need to tension the bottom. Then uh, spin it around a couple times each way. Bring that infinity sign back to the top and recheck that. I think I'm good. I've uh, rolled it around a couple times each way. I'll check it as I get some hours on it. Again, there's the infinity sign right over the roller. And uh, the clearance under there, you know, about a you know, centimeter, centimeter and a half is what I got, my machine says, under that center roller. Uh, so I feel good about it. Show you how smooth it goes here.
so that uh, last top roller went in there. Uh, got the track tensioned up. Again with that infinity sign over the top roller and uh, proper clearance in there. Uh, everything looks good on this. Spins good. I'm gonna uh, take it and track it and I'm hoping for the best. Before this thing was very loud, uh, obnoxiously loud as it tracked. A lot of creaking, grinding, everything else. So I'll get her spun around here and get a video as I track forward on it. Well, here we are. Uh, and it's not silent, but it's a lot better than it used to be. I'll uh, track forward here. Sounds like it's mainly coming from my left side. Um, right side is pretty much silent. But it's a lot better than it used to be. So, um, you know, I'm happy with it. I've got a job to do this weekend, so it's gonna get ran like this. Um, you know, I don't know what else I could do. These two rollers here uh, are still the old ones. They felt tight, they spun fine. Uh, they weren't loose on the shaft or anything, so I don't think that's an issue. Uh, it could be this front idler wheel making the noise. It also felt tight when I spun it, and that idler is about three hundred eighty four hundred dollars um, so um, I don't know what else I mean these track pieces here are, are worn down to the metal probably because um, when this top roller was missing so maybe that's what's making it have more noise maybe there should be a, a rubber or some sort of pad on there that new tracks have that these don't um, I don't know but I'll run it this weekend and probably for a while until I notice that there's some other uh, major issues with it. So thanks for watching. And if you've got any questions, put them in the comments. Or if you've got any comments about how to do anything uh, better than what I've done here or faster or easier or got a shortcut, uh, let us know. Thank you.